Hey, it's Chill here. Welcome back to C++ Game Engine Infrastructure. Got a different video for you today, not the uh, usual coding up. Today, we're going to be talking about the direction that I want to take this project in and uh, what are the final goals. We call this a statement of purpose. I'm going to keep the video short, but it will go in the main playlist with all the development logs. So, the main thrust is I want this to be primarily a replacement for SFML. If you're not familiar, SFML is a C++, I mean there's other language bindings, but it's mainly C++ uh, library for doing multimedia. It's a simple and fast multimedia library and allows you to easily access things like, uh, you know, creating a window, drawing 2D graphics with a sprite, text, music, and you know having uh, input so multimedia 2d primarily meant for making games right and it's very easy and clean interface with a lot of resource management in it and i mean look look at this code it's, it's so easy to create a window play music draw a sprite you've got a very simple game loop here and this is the kind of thing that i want to enable but you see, the thing about SFML is it is old as balls, hasn't had any updates in like over a decade. It's got no support for, you know, some basic essentials like the move semantics, lambda, smart pointers, stuff like, especially for like move, when you're dealing with resources like textures, uh, you don't want to be copying them and you want to be moving them when you transfer them from one function to another, from one object to another. And the the fact that you don't have that ability in SFML means that the, the syntax is kind of nasty. So I want something that can be as simple as this or even simpler to interface with, but that is all modern and nice and clean. And uh, yeah, we want a very low bar to entry, very easy integration. Uh, we want to cover most of the same, you know, general areas that SFML covers graphics, audio, create a window, get input, and some basic utilities like, you know, spatial types like vectors, rect, arc, that sort of thing. But we're also going to add a lot of extra features like we already did in logging. We want eventing, all sorts of neat things that we can add that are very useful to pull on that would be time consuming to build yourself. We're going to remove stuff uh, that does not, like SFML, if we take a look at what modules it has here, it's got like uh, a system module and it contains a lot of stuff that you just don't need, like mutex, lock. We have that in the standard library. We don't need a thread object. We have std thread, so we, can, we don't need to implement that stuff, but that doesn't mean we don't want other concurrency stuff like nice thread pools and, you know, like lock-free data structures. That's the sort of thing that we would like to have that isn't in SFML. Uh, one good thing that is in, is in SFML is networking, and we won't be doing that initially, but I would like to consider that, you know, eventually once we've covered all the uh, bases listed above. And I see the final product of what we're going to make here somewhere between a library framework and a game engine. So it's more than a mere library. It's going to have a whole framework associated with it. Uh, so it's not just a mere, you know, a collection of objects and functions that you can call. Uh, but it's not to the level of a game engine. So, I mean, it, it doesn't, it's not pre-built with all the ways of things being done having been fixed for you and you can't change how to do business. It's not going to have an editor with it. It's all going to be configured in code. So I say it's more than a framework and less than a game engine. So what is the framework aspect of it? That's interesting to talk about here because if you look at like the SFML example here, you see that this isn't really framework. You can just call a few you know, functions, constructors, and then you have your own loop. There's no framework that you slot into. And that's very nice for a beginner, by the way. Um, but we're going to have a framework. So how does that work together? And so there's going to be like a simple mode where all of our, you know, inversion of control stuff is hidden and wrapped in simple functions. And then the user can just, you know, write a simple main with a loop like this. And they don't have to worry about all, you know, the crazy IOC containers and all the different components that are living under the surface. And, you know, the framework that we create, it's going to have a lot of, you know, advanced things like uh, 
data structures for sprites so you can batch them all together very efficiently and draw a lot of sprites on the screen. Um, but for a beginner, they probably don't need that. And so there'll be a simple wrapper that is you know, not the maximal performance, but it's still pretty good and is very easy to understand. And on behind the scenes, underneath this you know, facade, there's going to be an IOC container. It's going to be pre-populated with lots of useful default systems. Not all the systems that are available, but many of the useful ones. And what that means is a user can start with a very simple interface like this. And then as they gain confidence, they could even start using the IOC container to inject things and to customize how these different components work. Now. That's for you know beginners to work with. Now, if you want to take it a little more advanced, there will be a mode where there's a framework and you are you know explicitly interacting with the IOC container. There's a whole embedded you know game loop in the framework. Everything is sort of wired up and you can just inject your own logic by you know inheriting from some kind of app class or something like that, writing your own game loops by overriding functions and then inject that and it all just runs in the system. It's all pre-made and there's a lot of boilerplate and a lot of you know very useful but difficult things pre-implemented for you. Uh, but because it's IOC, you can also configure and you know augment all those different pre-built components to suit your own personal needs and it's going to in this mode you will have lots more systems that are enabled by default uh, for example you know by default you might have a game object container with a scene graph and every game object you know will be able to have components attached to it that system would probably not be enabled by default in the simple mode so i'm talking like something like what unity has basically and you know an eventing system with an event bus and you know local events where events can bubble up from lower levels to higher levels so this sort of thing would be on by default and finally, the third way that you could use the system is you don't use any framework, you don't use any IOC container, nothing is pre-built, and you just pick individual components a la carte. So you pick, you know, the window component, and you can use that. You don't have to use anything else with it. And as long as I don't couple the components to the IOC, uh, that should be viable. But that being said, it's, it's sometimes it's very convenient to, you know, um, resolve things out of the IOC container from within a component. Uh, so I, sh I shouldn't do that, but I might do it because it's just so tempting. So we'll see. We'll see how that goes, but hopefully I can maintain it so that you can just use the different components standalone without having the IOC at all if you wanted to. So yeah, that's how I envision this thing being used. Again, it is less than a game engine, but more than just a framework. It's somewhere in between. And But there's different ways you can use it to suit your needs and your skill level. Now, I got some future ambitions. How far this thing goes depends on, you know, how much interest is kept as it goes along and, you know, my own personal life conditions. But, uh, you know, unlike the previous projects where I basically the things that I was making was just an academic exercise to demonstrate some concepts rather than the thing itself being useful. The thing I'm trying to make here is hopefully going to be directly useful to people. And again, like I said, it's going to appeal to different audiences, so it's not just focused on one. It can be used by a bunch of different people in different ways. And I want to heavily support it with tutorial material because that's one thing that can, you know, make or break a project like this. It, you can make the greatest thing in the world. If no one knows how to use it, uh, it's not going to go anywhere. So, you know, beyond these videos where I document the development, I also want to make, you know, tutorial videos where I show how to do different things, make small demos. And it would be nice to get, you know, one or more actual, you know, polished games, small ones, but not just demos made you know by by myself and maybe by other people in the community as well uh i want my goal is to make integration as easy as possible so we're going to make it so that i think the preferred way of getting this will be vc package you just you know do a vc package manifest and it'll pull it in and you're good to go but i also want to supply pre-built library plus include packages and you know maybe a guide for how you could just take the project and just basically move the uh, the projects into your own Visual Studio solution and just build it directly as part of your solution. Eventually, you know, to start off with, I'm going to have one implementation of something like, for example, the graphics, uh, which will be direct 3D11. But eventually, I'd like to add multiple 
implementations, like a Direct 3D 12 implementation, for example. Like I said above, I'd like to add networking support at some time. Coroutine, asynchronous, kind of goes together with networking. Uh, and here's the big one. If it takes off and I find it's worth the effort, then I think it would be important to make it cross-platform. So not just Windows, not just Microsoft Visual Studio. Uh, so if, if it picks up a solid, you know, rising tide of support and interest, then I will look into, you know, adding support for Linux. So making graphics components that are compatible with Linux and eliminating Win API stuff leaking into the abstract interfaces. And as part of this whole process, uh, often a small but vocal minority has cried out for this. Uh, I think we'll be transitioning the project over to CMake. But again, this is all contingent on there being enough, you know, interest, support, and also just my own personal life. But it would be nice. I mean, this is this is one of the important things that will take the project uh, to the next level and put it on the same footing as SFML, which is cross-platform across Windows, Linux, and Mac. So there you have it. There is my whole goal for this. And uh, I think it, I think it'll be great. There's a lot of good things about SFML, but it is dated. And uh, I think some that void, they feel, hopefully you think so too, and you uh, will be eager to join. But either way, it's gonna be an interesting experience and experiment and I, I really think the idea has legs this could have potential uh, but anyways in the next video we're going to be returning to the standard development log stuff we're going to be creating our windows system and, and that's going to kind of open the pathway to creating our graphics system Lots of fun stuff there. I've already done some of the uh, the exploratory work there and I'm sure many of you are going to enjoy the results. Until then, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click the like button. Helps a lot. And I will see you again with some more C++ game engine infrastructure.